Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the... Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. The bullet we're testing today is the 168 grain Barnes LRX, which will be running through our 28 nozzler from 100 to 500 yards. We've tested the LRX once before in our 270 WSM, and if you'd like to check that video out, a link will be in the description. Alrighty, done with shooting, let's look at some impact images. Overall, we got decent expansion at all ranges fired. Of course, estimated impact velocities were provided today using JBM ballistic software. At the 100 yard mark, the pedals peeled back and jettisoned themselves from the bullet. We've got some beautiful rifling marks engraved on the shank and an almost imperceptible slight twist in the shank. About 200 yards, the trend continues. All four pedals are gone, and here we can see that the bullet is noticeably more bent. 300, again, no pedals left, and another bend in the bullet, which I'd hazard a guess is due to the slightly softer copper alloy used in the LRX versus the TSX and TSX. TTSX. 400 is pretty much the same, not a whole lot new going on here, pedals gone with slight bend in the shank. At 500, we finally managed to retain two out of four of the pedals as the bullet dropped to an estimated impact velocity of 24-23 feet per second. Image is complete, let's look at some graphs. Interesting results here, expansion is pretty steady at right around 1.6 times original size up to 400 yards with tracks because at all of those ranges we had total ejection of the pedals so it makes sense that they would be a similar diameter. Expansion peaks at around 500 yards with nearly 1.9 times original size which is more closely in line with previous testing and that's due to the retention of those two pedals whereas at the earlier ranges we shed all the pedals. Weight retention steps up each range fired, usually with most monolithics, we see a pretty flat trend line here owing to how 
tough they are. In this case, due to the slightly softer alloy used in the LRX, it's less even weight retention, but still very high across all ranges fired, giving us an average weight retention of 86.37%, which is what we tend to see on the high end for some bonded core bullets. And again, this is probably due to most of the bullets shedding their pedals. Now, the reason that Barnes uses a softer alloy in this bullet is sort of in the name. It's the long range expanding bullet, so it's designed to properly initiate expansion at longer ranges and lower velocities. Barnes lists the minimum expansion velocity of the LRX as being 1600 feet per second, while in contrast, options like the TTSX are usually around 1800. Personally, I don't like to go below 2000 feet a second of impact speed with the TTSX, but I believe the LRX would likely work down around their listed speed of 1600. As we saw in this test, the bullet didn't start retaining pedals until it dipped to nearly 2400 feet per second. Next, we'll take a look at our drop chart to better understand the effective ranges we might use this bullet at. And just to clarify real quick, my max shot I'm taking is 600 yards with good conditions, so when we're talking about the ranges this bullet would work at, I'm not saying I'd be comfortable pushing it that far, just that it should theoretically work at that range. And again, the ranges we're discussing here are based off of a muzzle velocity of 3197 feet per second. And you'll notice if you look at the velocity, the impact velocities are very slightly different here than what we reported earlier for our recovered projectiles, and that is because this drop chart assumes a 10 mile per hour wind. Well, the drop chart that you'll see on the right factors in the wind gusts of around 24 miles per hour that we were experiencing on day of shooting. Now with either drop chart with our muzzle velocity of 31 197 feet per second, and owing to the LRX's relatively high BC, for a monolithic at least, of 0.550, at 1,000 yards, we're still above that minimum required expansion threshold of 1,600 feet per second. And at that range, though, we are experiencing almost 5 feet of wind drift, and it gets a lot worse with those 24 mile per hour winds. We've got over 11 feet of wind drift. And while I might not be personally comfortable adjusting for that much wind drift when taking a shot on a game animal, some hunters are. And if a hunter was to do so and hit their target, in my opinion, the bullet would effectively expand. I think for those longer shots, there are better options. Personally, if I was going to hunt at that distance, with this cartridge, I'd probably be looking at Burger's 195 grain EOL, provided that I could get my hands on Reloader 33. Now, energy foot-pounds at that range is low, but I don't use energy as a deciding factor with monolithics. The all-copper alloy bullets are, to me, designed to give me two holes, an entrance and an exit, which at 1770 feet per second, the LRX will do marvelously. If I hit a shoulder, which is usually what I'm shooting for with a mono, then it's going to destroy that shoulder. So with a muzzle velocity of nearly 3200 feet a second, the Barnes 168 LRX will likely expand out past 1,000 yards, but I'm not telling you to use it at that range. That's got to be a personal choice. So what critters would I use this on? Well, it's pretty simple. Today, this bullet in this cartridge at this muzzle velocity is in everything on the North American continent, out to 600 or so yards for me. I would be happy to use this on deer with the way that monos are constructed. It'll provide a very narrow wound cavity, so I don't think I'd get a ridiculous amount of meat loss on deer-sized game. This would be fantastic elk medicine, and I definitely would not feel undergunned hunting moose or brown bear with it. As far as load data goes, of course, standard safety disclaimer, if you're going to reload, do it safely and stick with enlisted safe powder charges with the correct powder. Basically, uh, act like an adult. So on your screen, you should see the load we were working with. This load is straight out of Nosler's online load data. It's a max recommended charge of Rotumbo sitting at a standard C2 length. The only substitute is the CCI large rifle primer. I believe their recipe specified federal, but I didn't have any, so... Oh well, what can you do? Well, now that we're done with all that, let us know in the comments what you think of this bullet, especially if you have any experience with it, or if you've used it in the field. Those reports are always appreciated, and someone will get something out of them, so sound off below. We haven't been pushing out a lot of videos recently, nor engaging with all of you. Work's been a bit crazy for me over the last few months, so some hobbies like this channel have had to take a back seat for a bit. We've got several more projects in the pipeline, several videos worth of content already filmed. As long as I can get some more time to edit, we'll keep pushing them out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.